Hello everybody and welcome to Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom. Um, I am sure you all know of Lee Anthony Taylor. He's a great friend of mine, an amazing reflexologist and very well known for coronal reflexology and also for men's health. And Lee put together a panel, an international panel, um, of reflexologists to discuss men and reflexology. So that is what we're going to be showing you today, the discussion that we had. And I will now hand over to Lee to introduce our panel. Okay, hi everybody. My name is Lee Anthony Taylor. I'm a reflexologist here in the UK. And what I'm doing today is gathering together a whole load of reflexologists from all over the world who've got very specific opinions on why reflexology is good for men and good for their health. And what I wanted to do just to start us off is to introduce all those involved today and to say a special thank you to them for taking the time off. So up in the top left there, we've got Sam, Sam Bellier. Bellier? Bellier. Bellier. Yeah. Bellier. That's it. I almost got it right. Uh, and he's from, are you in Tampa still, Sam? Yeah? Yep, Tampa, yep. Florida. Sam speaking to us from Tampa at the moment in Florida. And Sam, also known as the Foot Whisperer, because of his work, certainly with advanced foot reading as well. He joins us today. Thank you, Sam. And then coming down, we've got David, David Waite, also from the UK, great friend of mine. And his work on finger-free re reflexology is certainly coming to the fore, long overdue. And uh, thank you, David, for joining us today. Brilliant to see you. Thank pleasure, you. pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Pleasure, pleasure. And then we go across to Sergio, Sergio de Luigi, who is from Lisbon in Portugal. And I've had the great pleasure of working with Sergio since 2009, when he came on one of my courses mm. originally. And now he invites me over to Lisbon, uh, to his institute. Um, and we do amazing things. We talk about loads of different uh, ideas. Uh, to do with reflexology and he's been very supportive of me and my work since like I say 2009 so thank you Sergio welcome thank you Lee and finally last but not least we have Spiros Spiros Dimitrikoulos who comes to us from Greece and um, <laughs> hopefully he's managed to get his internet connection okay he's outside his car now so <laughs> hello everyone Hi, lovely to see you. Thank you, Spirit, for taking this on. I know it's thank it's you for the invitation. Good to be with all of you. Okay, it's later in the evening there, I know, so uh, we we won't keep you that long. All right. So the the aim behind it is for this particular session is we're going to talk about two specific things, and the first one is what can we do in order to make reflexology more attractive as an idea for men in particular. And what is it about men's health that we should be encouraging them to come forward for sessions or treatments? So, Sam, we'll start with you, please. What, what would you, your take be on that in order to encourage more men to come forward? You know, I think your question about what we can do to make reflexology accessible to men and increasing men in the profession share the same answer, which is exposing men to reflexology as a noble profession. Um, body work as a whole across the world is a uh, female dominated profession because it takes a certain amount of emotional intelligence, sensitivity, and traits that are conditioned out of men in order to practice and hold space for people who are in a very vulnerable physical and mental emotional state. And I think if we change that narrative and we invite more men to practice body work, it will simultaneously heal a lot of the burden of masculinity that's been placed on men throughout the ages, stripping them of all of those internal development qualities, but also get them interested in their own healing in the process. And I know, from my personal experience, I had never received body work until I went to body work school. I had intended to be a physical therapist, not a massage therapist. And so it was only during my massage class that I was thrown on the table and exposed to touch for the very first time. And I think that if we teach men that massage therapy and benefiting others through the art of touch, the art of anatomy, the art of healing the body and getting in touch with the body. If we repackage that 
as a noble profession, I think will start to stimulate men's interest in that more reflective quality of how they can heal and how they can receive, but also how they can turn this into a lifestyle. If I was to ask you the question of how you would define the difference between touch and intimacy, for instance, because I know mm -hmm. that that's a, a vital issue that comes up for men mm -hmm. and a, a, a big misunderstanding, of course, as well as a result of it. How would you define that, the difference between the two? It's, I love this, I love this question because before this talk, I researched men in body work and on the first page of Google, half of the listings were confusing sexual intimacy with massage therapy. And I think that that's very telling. I think that we still have so much work to do to redefine those two words because a lot of men and women have experienced touch from men in the form of abuse. And that type of therapeutic touch and defining that therapeutic touch from intimacy as a non-expectation oriented or non-sexual form of touch is a huge reconditioning that needs to happen in our field. But part of that is popularizing reflexology as a non-invasive, non-nudity based modality that allows people to receive touch on the extremities and not need to disrobe or confuse those two boundaries. And I think that that reflexology is poised in the field in a very unique way to tackle that issue head on. Right, brilliant, thank you. Uh, Spiros, can I bring you in at this point as well? If we're talking about touch and certainly uh, the idea of intimacy, it's also bound up in cultural expectations as well. And I know from certainly with speaking with David about things as well, is depending on where you live, you'll have a certain attitude of either men working with men or women working with men as well. What's your experience in Greece? Do you find that there's a cultural difference there that makes it more acceptable for men to receive reflexology? Uh, thank you for the question. I want to congratulate Sam. I always enjoy, you know, listening to him, how he puts things, you know, with ex eloquent words, you know, appropriate words and expresses all this. So that was great points. Uh, yes, all around the world we see and in countries like the United States, many times foot massage parlors are fronts for this uh, conduct conduct that we do not approve of in Greece um, even with women like until spas were not f fashionable until let's say 15 years ago so even sometimes my mother fe feels like when I might give her a massage on the back the draping and all that she might be shy and I said hey mom relax you know things like this so but from my experience it's about educating the public, uh, taking away this, that it's uh, something for very posh or for something expensive, something for the upper class, uh, that it's quite common. And the cultural aspect you mentioned, of course, is very important. In Thailand, nobody pays for massage because everybody knows how to, only tourists pay for massage in Thailand because everybody at home gives each other a massage. It's no big deal. In the Western world, it seems we make it a big deal. So for men, yes, or women, when they come to me the first time, I do a lot of massage. Uh, they might be, you know, a bit concerned about this, anxious in the beginning, but you have to help them get comfortable. And this is easy, you know. It's also important that we feel comfortable as men also. Yeah. Nobody thinks about the therapist, how he feels, male or female, about who they're going to touch. So but I think it's good. I think it's good. Yeah, here in Greece. Yeah. Why do you think in the West then we make such a big deal of it, Spiros? Come back to me. Come back to me. Okay, while we're waiting for Spiros to come back to us, Sergio, as someone that I know, I, I've worked with you, like I say, for a long time. All right, sir. Are you back on? Are you there? Are you still there? I think I am. I can hear you. Let's let, let's get Spiros answering that question. Hey, there I am. All right, I'm All right, sorry. Good. Uh, forgive me. Why, okay, so your question, why? Yes? Yeah, why, why is it such a big deal for us in the West? Why do we make it such a big deal? 
I did a program as in the kindergarten once a couple of years ago as part of an anti-bullying program where I would go with uh, another reflexologist and he had my he was my student and he had studied to be a kindergarten uh, teacher whatever they are I think they're called like this so what's interesting is you take cream out and you start rubbing another person and the children instinctively want cream and want to participate. It reminds us of primates and grooming rituals and things like this. So it's like it's in our nature in a way. Then society comes at one age and you have to teach your children that not all touch is appropriate and you have to take care of this or the other thing like the EU has special videos, training videos uh, for all the children in the European Union. I know of this. So it's, um, yeah, somewhere there, it's hidden in there somewhere. Right. It's natural to take care of each other, but something goes wrong along the way, it seems. Right. We have to be careful. It's a society where everyone has to have their own space. An interesting comment during COVID was we as therapists, during you know last year still a lot of fear about covid and they were saying we give space to people safe space they come to us in order they come so close to us last year when it was very difficult to approach another person in order for us to give them safe space yeah. Yeah. just thoughts i don't know if i answered your question yeah i mean it's opened up the discussion this whole idea certainly since the pandemic started where we had the paradox of we all need to come together as a community, but we need to stay as far apart as possible, <laughs> which, which to me, I could never reconcile that idea of, you know, we all need to be able to recognize we're all part of the same thing, but please don't get within two meters of the person that you're next to for fear of something else that's going on and, and that confusion that went with that as well. Thanks, Miros. Um, Sergio, I wanted to bring you in because there's somebody that I've worked with over a number of years and I've worked, I've seen you working with the Institute as well and with uh, your own undergraduate program. What, from your point of view, is it that um, pulls men into either becoming reflexologists or wanting to try reflexology in the first place? What kind of promotional work do you do? What kind of words do you use to entice them in? Um, for the past years, I don't, I don't have many, many promotion promoting the, the reflexology. So, because we are around for almost 15 years, so um, I think it's just the website that, and then the people that start talking one to another and bring people to do reflexology. So I can I see from this last 15 years since uh, I have the school that things are are gradually uh, reflexology getting to know uh, publicly known uh, and and slowly the people are starting to contact. Of course, still a high um, percentage of people who come to reflexology are women, but of course we have men also. But those men who come um, to, to our session to, to reflex, reflexology, usually um, most of them, they, they, most of them who, who book for themselves, not the ones that come because their wives had to come, uh, but uh, those who, who book for themselves, they usually they appreciate, they 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 understand, and and they come more often because they 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 can feel how how it affects on them. So, um, but I don't think that I think the problem um, is that uh, those men who come they don't share enough with one another. So they come, they are open, those few that are open, they are open, but they don't share with their friends or do with the other men. So I think maybe we should focus on how those men who come and they are open to it, or they feel that reflexology has a chance with them, how, how should they uh, open themselves to the other men to, to, to come for, for reflexology? It's like the education program we're, we're really... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you find as well that it's actually your, your clients who come forward that end up possibly signing up for the courses? So would you get your male clients possibly signing up to become, on, you know, as a reflexologist as well? Does it work that way? Um, I think I have, I have from, from experience, uh, I didn't have many men who come uh, for reflexology then ended up doing the course. 
but usually usually for each for each class of 12 students and uh, maybe I have one or two male sometimes three or four um, but usually it's like the, the clients usually when we have a, a male student uh, usually they are applied they are interested and and they want to you know they they want most of them they 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 stay on the profession so um yeah sometimes the 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 few of the students before doing starting the course uh, they come like to do a session just to see how they feel with the reflexology but then all the all of them started uh ended up doing the course yeah right right okay Brilliant. Thanks, Sergio. David, okay. over to you. As a fellow UK reflexologist, we have particular issues in common, and those are really around the idea of, I mean, certainly with, with the big associations that are out there, the vast majority of them are the female practitioners, and we are very much in the minority, um, and I think it's we feel that. Um, I did a survey back in January of this year about um, do you have any particular personal safety concerns about offering reflexology to potential male clients? And uh, I came back with 400 plus responses, and some of them were quite startling, really startling in terms of, you know, the, the, the four responses were uh, often, sometimes, rarely or never about safety concerns. And I would say around 35 to 40% of those who responded said they often or <laughs> had personal safety concerns so much so that one of the actual uh, one of the responses detailed that a woman had a panic button linked to her burglar alarm that went to the police station and if she felt that threatened she wouldn't be afraid to use that now that to me that kind of extreme kind of view suggests that we we aren't anywhere near yet addressing what the main issues are around bringing men into the clinic rooms what do you think those issues are, David, around bringing men in? And how do you think we might be able to, to start to change those? Is it a perception about what reflexology is maybe we start with first? That's such um, a disturbing result that you got from that survey. Um, and I, I remember seeing it when you, you put it up. Yeah. And from personal experience, um, when I was married, it's a long time ago, but my wife, she was an aromatherapist and I was doing the reflexology. And something that not a lot of people know is I used to actually teach massage myself as well. And if somebody phoned up and wanted a treatment from my wife, because she would be the one that was advertising aromatherapy massage, if it was a gentleman that phoned, she would immediately put the say on the phone, I'll just go and get my husband because he does the gentleman. And even though I would be present in that, you know, because we, we had our clinic from home, like a lot of people do, even though we got our clinic from home, she still wouldn't massage somebody that either wasn't a um, <laughs> husband of an existing client or somebody that had been referred to by, there was a, a, an osteopath that we did a lot of referrals with. Um, so if it was somebody that she didn't know, it was just the assumption, oh, no, 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 not going to massage this person. Uh, I do remember there was a very, very funny evening, though. This guy turned up, he booked in for a massage treatment. He was built like an, an Adonis. <laughs> he was beautiful. He really was. He was a professional boxer. But of course, I'd got him. <laughs> and I remember my wife going, oh, and you could see, it's like, I want to massage him. I'm going, oh, no, he's <laughs> mine. <laughs> but there is this, you're absolutely right, Lee, there is this, sadly, a perception that if a man books in for a treatment, I, mean, I know we're talking about reflexology tonight, and that there shouldn't be an issue. There shouldn't be an issue at all about reflexology. I mean, you don't get undressed even for a reflexology treatment. I mean, how can it be that women, you know, female reflexologists might feel threatened 
by is, having a man. It's it's it's, it's it so sad. Is it the perception that's put out there that it is because it's considered a form of massage? It's therefore has that intimate value to it because mm. you're making contact in the same way as you would do with a body massage. And and because it's labelled as such, and a lot of the promotion we have in the UK is, um, me and David have a laugh about this, is the idea of a foot with a lotus flower in it, you know, and that's supposed to symbolise reflexology, um, is that it's just the connotation. We haven't got there yet with our explanations, and therefore people can make their own versions up of what reflexology is. Mm. Um, and most of the time for for very strange thinking men, for instance, who buy into that concept, oh, well, it's a massage, therefore it must be dot, dot, dot. They join it together and they come up with so something that's totally, totally wrong in their thinking. Spiros, tell me about, in Greece, how, how do people promote reflexology that might address some of those issues about female practitioners feeling worried about having male clients in their room? How do you promote it? Or is it the same problem there as well? Not that much. Uh, I would like, can I add a few comments, please, to yeah. previous subjects? Uh, I find it interesting that, yes, female practitioners far exceed male practitioners in our profession. But regarding educators, especially international speakers, it's a different situation. You have many male uh, educators or practitioners or however tutors of uh, advanced courses and so on regarding before you were saying a female might be you know something happened with a male it could happen with another female of course yes let's not forget the strong neurological association having to do with the peripheral nerves in the lower limbs it is the same uh, dermatomes with uh, the genitals. There is a strong connection in the homunculus pen fields, homunculus, the feet are next to the genitals in uh, the somatosensory cortex. So, and the pain center is also, according to one scientist near. So there's strange connections when you touch the feet, but of course it's a treatment that's safe because everyone is draped, you are, touching someone at a distance if you can perceive the feet at a distance from one in the body no in Greece, i have heard of some issues but it's not something common reflexology is well respected here in greece and i don't assume like we have names for this they're called studios so if you were to go to a studio it would be of this uh these things happening but if you would go to for massage or for reflexology has different names immediately and legislation here is very light there's no regulation or restrictions or you i see in the states and in other countries always the police is involved to check out these uh, places these permits and so on so things are good here because and proof of this is that there are uh, no needs from the police or the government to double check things. As for students attending mail, uh, you I want to make a comment on that. Uh, I don't think reflexology is for all men, as it is not for all women. Yes, this may, it's for a male that possibly is sensitive and wants to express this sensitivity through our work. I find it more sensitive than massage, body work. It can be. And mind you, I'm the least sensitive male reflexologist. I do not claim to be aesthetic and all these things, you know. And I think my athletes helped me uh, to, you know, show people, the public through social media that it's, you know, it's, it's okay. Things like this. Yeah. yeah. And that's Thank you. Thank you. No, that, I mean, it's definitely the image that I see on all the feeds that I get from yourself. Uh, working with sports people in particular it it does demonstrate that you have that that masculine side brought into uh to the situation sam can i bring you in on this as well from what spiros just said in terms of regulation and promotion of the therapy itself is that something that might allay some of the fears for for women who work with men for instance or what what do you think could be done 
It does, unfortunately. So my background started in massage therapy and then progressed to specializing in reflexology. So in the state of Florida, we need a massage therapy license of minimum 500 hours. I did 750 to practice and then you are licensed. You're a licensed healthcare provider. Um, but because my name is Sam, uh, I had several women clients book online with me expecting to see a Samantha and they would walk through my door and literally say, I cannot be massaged by a male therapist and leave. Um, so even though there is licensing in place, the fear is still there. And honestly, the results of your survey are not surprising to me. It, as somebody who has experienced several clients who have suffered from traumatic abuse, one of the things that they talk to me about is how they feel that my being a identified male practitioner is therapeutic to their process because I'm the first male that they've ever felt safe with. Right. Yeah. Like it's such a, it's such a terrible thing to talk about, but that's where we're at. I think the whole idea of men in body work stems from the idea of the burden of masculinity and the baggage of masculinity needing to be healed as a whole. And I think body work is an excellent way to do that, to reintroduce people to therapeutic touch. But although the boundaries and the licensing is a good start, um, I think that the conversation is both deeper in terms of legislation, because I think we need to focus less on regulating massage therapy and more on regulating sexual acts as a separate form of kind of profession, the oldest profession. That way massage therapy can thrive in its own environment, but also the idea of men and healing the male trauma um, and re-educating what masculinity looks like and how men can, like I said before, kind of bow at the altar of healing and receive um, for the first time in their lives. Uh, that healing experience. I think that's where we need to go and no amount of legislation can right. prepare somebody for that deeper discussion. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Thanks, Sam. Now, I want to just do a little bit of a shift in emphasis here and I want to bring in the words of uh, uh, another reflexologist who unfortunately can't be with us tonight and that's Peter Lundfranzen, who's Copenhagen. He, he can't join us live but he sent me some comments in and I just want to throw this into the mix as well. So we got something else to think about. And what he what he's basically saying is that men seem to be more fact orientated than women and seek a scientific explanation for, for their work. And especially if they've got a science background, he says, they might have a hard time in accepting ideas about energy fields, chi movement, chakras and that kind of thing as well. So um, is that something, Sergio, would you say that it's something that you would agree with that men are much more outcome based, more orientated towards, well, if I'm going to invest money and time in this, I want to know what the outcome is going to be. I want you to tell me specifically about what you're doing. Is that in your experience? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Most, most of the men who, 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 who come, they, they, usually they they want to tell them tell them their, their problems and they expect to to for me to tell them so how long <laughs> how long do will do i need to do this at to uh until i feel i feel i feel good but um uh generally um what i was going to say um yeah uh they 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 expect us to to give them a few a few answer but like, like i said probably because most of the men who 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 come uh, or let me say the other way not all the men who come they 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 are like this but or most of the men who wants to to experience the the reflexology they have some expectations but uh, of course we can uh, we can't generalize uh, gener generalize yeah. In, in all of these all of these men right yeah, yeah. thanks thanks Sergio. i mean the, the other thing Peter says as well is that um men and, and and i know this is stereotyping things but it does throw it into the argument for us to have a discussion which is great um men are less patient they hmm. want results much quicker um and 
they like I know we can't use the word diagnosis, but we do use it. They like a diagnosis of what's going on. In other words, a breakdown, an analysis, and put into terms that they can understand more so than women. David, is that, <laughs> you're laughing at it now, is that something that, that feeds into, into your line of work? Do you see that happening or, or is that too much of a generalisation? No, no, no. <laughs> I was laughing because you are spot on. You really, really are. Um, it actually reminded me this the thing about the the the, the explanation, the science, mm. the facts uh, thing that we were talking about with Sergio. That was me. That really was me when I first started looking into reflexology. I was I was wanting to learn a therapy, but I didn't know which therapy, and I wanted a therapy that I could explain. If I was going to be if I was going to be delivering it. I needed to be able to explain it. And reflexology was brilliant because you really can explain it scientifically as well as aesthetically, esoterically, so to speak. Yeah. Um, the impatience, yes, I think you're right as well. Um, uh, a bloke is going to say, how many treatments are gonna, am I going to need? Um, you know, how, how does this work? Uh, what's the matter with me? You know, what there was, um, I haven't, I haven't seen this gentleman since before COVID. No, no, sorry. Tell a lie. I haven't seen him for about, um, or oh, about 18 months now, but just after COVID, um, I started seeing him again, but every time he would come, he would see me, he wouldn't tell me what he wanted me to work on. Yeah. He wanted me to Nothing. tell him what the matter with him was yeah. that was his thing you know it yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's coming in it's coming in that's it um so yes that's why i was laughing because you are just so right we're very much facts we're very much explanation um and the energy thing i i, I actually love that side of it but explaining it in my class with both the uh, the spiritual energy explanation but then also um, being able to explain it from a scientific perspective, because not everybody is comfortable with energy. Mm -hmm. So being able to, and maybe that's because I'm a bloke, I feel the need to be able to give both explanations. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, on my course, the, the, the Reflexology for Men's Health course, part of the journey on the course is to get men to sense energy so mm. that they recognise it as as, as something articulate so they can actually say right okay oh you're doing this with me this is what you're working with this is the raw ingredients that we've got is it so they they can then identify with that and say right okay when we're working with energy we use it as a term afterwards they go oh well, you mean that thing where i experienced that before and i go yeah exactly that's what we're working with and i think it's important to have an identifier because because energy is, as a term is so diffuse anyway and it's it, it can be 101 different things to 101 different people. But when we talk about it in terms of what it does to people and the way they experience it, it's pretty similar, you know, across the board when, when we experience it as well. Um, what I wanted to do as well is just bring in another one of Peter's comments here, Peter Franson's comments, which is the idea of many male clients like to experience sweet pain. I think we all understand sweet pain. Yeah, we're all happy with that idea. Yeah. Spiros. What is your, um, your, your form of orthopedic reflexology as well? Is that a much firmer pressure? Does that work almost on an osteopathic principle? What, what's that? It can be. It can be. But again, it's culture. When I'm in the UK, what is firm compared to what is firm in Greece or China, yeah. it's the same word, but things uh, you have to keep things in perspective. Yeah. Uh, Peter, for the second time, was spot on uh, regarding his first comment. Yes, I understand the questions, the scientific trying to prove process. But in my mind was Peter what said, it's also men, you know, kind of sweet pain, if you like, maybe more help the stress come out. I remember a man, may I like uh, share this experience with you guys? A couple came. And I worked on the woman, and she is, may I describe her, very aesthetic, very energetic, let's say. This is how she enjoys her treatment. 
and the man really likes me and, you know, he's very social with me and all that. But I could feel that, you know, regarding reflexology, he's kind of withdrawing, you know what I mean? And he said, yeah, just do a checkup, he said. I said, all right, I'll fix you up good. So I start going over through, uh, I'll be honest, the, the basic income reflexes, the way she describes them when I does this. And he was wearing a smart watch. All right? Yeah. And I'm on where we, Ingham uh, and maybe our charts have the heart reflex. And, you know, I was going through, and this is your urinary bladder. This is this, this is that. And at the heart reflex, he felt some really excruciating pain without any hard pressure. And he kind of folded up and he bended his body and shouted. And then his, his watch started ringing. All right? Beeping his watch, his smart watch. And he said, Spiros, come and see this. And I said, what is it? I don't have such a watch. And he said, I, I read on his watch, congratulations, your stress levels have lowered. You have just lowered your stress levels. And this is what really got to him. And this was, you know, a couple of months ago, maybe last summer. And I said, oh, maybe I should have smart watches or find something. They're using this in spas, you know, uh, the same applications we have for health on our phones. And it's uh, this would be for us in the past to be in a hospital setting to have, That's you know, somebody connected. Technology. Things are convenient. So maybe men and some women need to have devices like this <laughs> on them just to show, you know, a difference or something. Yeah. But I agree on the pain on men. They do have to let go of tension and then we have time. It's also an issue. Maybe it's cultural. I'm a man. I'm from Sparti. This is, I'm Spartan. So I'm talking to you right now from Sparti. And you know, if you've seen the movie 300, supposedly we're all this macho stuff, yeah. whatever. That, that was but men. <laughs> yeah. But my daughters have heard me teach online and I was telling my students, I have a strong feminine side. I might be male, you know, biologically, whatever, let's not get into wording and all that. Yeah. But I, I do have a constitution that is feminine and I do need to express it, either taking care of my children or other things. There are many ways to express your feminine energy. And maybe men do need somewhere, a haven to just lie down and get tension off safely. Yeah, yeah. Is that something, the whole group now, is this something that I think that we all share in common, is that we have at least recognized that we have a, a viable and strong enough feminine side that not only is being explored now, but we, we've learned to live with and we've learned to use it to our advantage. Is that something that we feel that, you know, um, we're, we're comfortable with talking about? I know I certainly am anyway. Um, Sergio, what do you think in terms of, Portuguese men and the idea of having a, a feminine side, is that becoming more and more acceptable or, or are you finding that there's some, some setbacks with that? Yeah, still is, for the Portuguese men, is there are still some setbacks. Um, I think gradually, like every other thing that uh, people are starting to accept, uh, it's taking its time. But, but yeah, I understand this because I also... Uh, I think from my cultural background, uh, actually, I, was, I wasn't born in Portugal. I was born in, in Brazil. So I have Portuguese family and Brazilian family. So from, from our, my Brazilian side, uh, everything, everyone is more open, is more uh, open to touch, is more open to, you know, uh, to express one another, express our feelings. Um, from the Portuguese side, I think it, 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 culturally it's it's a little bit more 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 difficult, but slowly starting to 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 come out. So for me, it was a little bit more easy because um, I always had this 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 side. I always uh, expressed my 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 feminine side very 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 easily, and and so and I started doing reflexology uh, since 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 I graduated. So, so I wanted to be a reflexologist since a teenager. So it was kind of easy for me to, to do that. Brilliant. Thanks, Sergio. So last part, we're just going to finish up now, but I just want to go to each individual uh, person and ask them for their, their final summing up really of what, what the way ahead is really for us 
in terms of getting men into the clinic rooms and getting them out of the clinic rooms as well once we've got them in there um, so that they don't become reliant on us as another form of allopathy, if you like. Um, but also what can we do in terms of promoting the whole profession, the business side of reflexology and bringing that forward as well. Because my, my personal feeling is that men might be your greatest skeptics to begin with, but you're, they're your best ambassadors at the end of the day. And they really can sort of go and spread the word quite easily and quite, you know, quite far reaching as well. Um, so Sam, just to finish up then, what would you say um, in response to those, those two sort of questions that I've put? Sure, I think the big thing is that men need accountability. Um, they need to take accountability of how men are perceived in a female dominated profession, both with clients and other practitioners. Uh, they also need to take accountability for their own healing journey and their own healing process, having conversations with more men about what body work really represents and how it can be accessed in a very easy and non-expectant way. Um, the various forms that body work can take, not just with reflexology, but also with yoga and acupuncture and acupressure and other forms of massage and cupping. Uh, you know, a lot of what Spiros talked about with the, the hurt so good pain. You know, I think that a lot of that is the excuse that men use in order to justify the work, but getting men to a point where the work does not need to be justified is I think what I would like us to focus on. That's great. Thank you, Sam. So, uh, Spiros, let's go to you just to sum up then. Uh, just in conclusion, this idea of where do you feel we're going or, or what further steps do we need to make in order to have this inclusive, inclusive, I can't say the word, inclusivity of men into the clinic rooms and the profession? What more do we need to do? Go ahead, put you. Put your, put your microphone on, Spiros. Hang on. He's put his earphones in, but not his microphone on. <laughs> you got your microphone on? That's it. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. I missed the button. All right. Um, the science I understand, it's there, but we need practitioners, female or male, that have uh, a sensitive aspect to them. So in order for men to be inclusive in the profession, I would say I want the right men or the right women to come and train and to help us proceed uh, forward. Also, it's the, the way we work. Like I, as a father and husband, I enjoy that, you know, my, I'm very flexible with my timetable. I can work a bit in the morning, at noon, maybe in the evening. Uh, teaching, of course, you know, the weekends and all that is a bummer. It's uh, the, the best part. But this is good. It's uh, you have to, you know, fix your own business and you're male or female. You might find us attractive. Right. Brilliant. Thank you, Spiros. And of course, well, um, you're, you're cutting out a bit. Sensitivity. They have some like this to be you know thank you very much okay well that, that, that last bit even though you're saying thank you very much didn't he actually hear the last sort of 20 seconds of that so while we've still got a good connection with you do you just want to repeat that last bit you were saying i was saying thank you thank you very much Lee. yeah okay all right well <laughs> thank uh, you very much <laughs> they need okay can you hear me am yeah. i good can you hear me okay all right. Yeah, we're, yes, we're, yes, I can hear you perfectly. We're on the last leg, you know, so we're going to do it. So, right. Sergio, coming to yourself, what do you feel is, is the way ahead in terms of better promotion and much more clear identity for what reflexology is and what it can do for people? Where do you see that going? Yeah, it, it, it passes through education, right? passing the word for exactly what uh, reflexology does and, and education on, on you know, the acceptance of, of male uh, has, has um, also trying, uh, the male has an open, an open uh, person capable of uh, expressing uh, its feelings, his feelings, 
um, and and it's education or things uh, in the family or to to society how how can uh, male persons be able to join the profession and to uh, be as a patient also. So I think education is a is a good step. Education, for it. education yeah, it is the strongest word, isn't it? Education, education, education. Thanks, Sergio. Yeah. Uh, David, we obviously here in the UK are on a bit of a drive as well to to make sure that um, men are included, um, certainly within our health system as well. It's very poorly managed as far as um, men's health sort of activities are concerned. You know, the clinics for women, the well women clinics, there's no male equivalent of that in the UK. Does it stretch into other agencies that we've got to try and convince as well? to bring them on board so that men take their health seriously? Or is it something that we can manage on our own? I think there is very much that um, aspect that males are expected to be strong and tough and, you know, be able to look after themselves and you're weak if you have to, you know, go to the doctor, that kind of thing. Yeah. So there could be that kind of aspect about it that stops men coming for any kind of healthcare reflexology included. But something that um, when you were asking Spiros about making reflexology accessible for men that I remembered, um, we did for World Reflexology Week, we actually um, borrowed <clears throat> one of the shopping centers um, to place in Sheffield that we locally call Meadow Hell. Okay. It's, actually known as, it's actually known as Meadow Hall um, but it's one of the UK's biggest shopping malls. And we asked them, can we set up a whole row of reflexology chairs and people can come for reflexology? We had just as many men having treatments there as we did women. And it was amazing. And I think it was a case of the ladies that were doing the treatments felt comfortable treating the men because it was in public. Yeah. So nothing yeah. untoward could happen. Yeah. The men also felt comfortable because I do believe that men, shall I say, are more impulsive, will make a spur of the moment decision to have a treatment yeah. rather than thinking, oh, I'll book this ahead. I'll book a session, you know, and plan. We don't tend to plan very well. And we got loads of people saying, oh, are you here next week? Can we come back? Are you here tomorrow? And we go, no, it's just a one day thing. That's all we're doing. And But we could have... Seriously, we, we took £60,000 in charitable donations in one day for World Reflexology. Yeah, it was amazing. It really, really was. £60,000. Yeah. £60,000. £60,000. We, we worked it out. If we did this as a business, it would have been a multi-million pound. Where do um, we go? <laughs> and I, 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 I really hope one day we will get this where we have... Um, you know, a store in a shopping centre where it's a, a reflex, a foot rub store, you know, reflexology <laughs> drop-in centre. Yeah. Leave your husband with us. You can go and do your shopping and we'll look after your husband. He'll still uh, be get back, don't worry. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but I think that would work. Um, you know, that kind of idea. Yeah. But the idea of women being frightened to treat people in the privacy of their own clinic, their own home, yeah. that's an uphill struggle. Uh, and also maybe it's the case of men have got that worry of, oh, I'm going for a private appointment with a woman. Maybe this isn't such a good idea. I, I, I'm, I'm just thinking. Yeah, you know, it works that way around as well. Because obviously until we get a very clear identity about what reflexology is and what it can offer, it's open to so many interpretations that uh, you, you're always going to get people who will misconstrue it and have their own connotation of it um, and that's really I think down to the associations the associations should be doing more to promote through their own literature and through the intervention with government agencies so that while we're not going down the route of more regulation necessarily we're after clarification because I think ambiguity is is the enemy here it's the one that really allows people to step in and go well I thought you meant that I thought we were talking about this. Whereas if we're clearly saying, no, we're talking about an energy medicine that is providing a therapeutic healing quality 
and we work entirely on the feet or the hands or the ears or whatever specific part of the body you want to work with, that cuts out so much of the ambiguity and also gives more credence and kudos to the profession itself to say, look, this is what we're able to do. But I think we're in a position where because we are not allowed to claim a lot of things, we're not allowed to claim that we can do things, we're therefore, even within the profession, saying, well, what is it we can do? What is it we're capable of doing? What is it we're capable of offering without overstepping the standards, you know, the advertising standards or the regulations already in place to say what we can or can't do? So we're in a bit of a minefield at the moment. So, you know, we step this way and go, well, you can't say that. Or we go this way and we go, well, if I say that, is it going to be interpreted like this? So we really do need to get much clearer definition, I think, of what reflexology is and what it can offer. Now, whether that's at national level, international level, I know I read today that there's um, a consortium that's been set up with reflexology associations around the world trying to get a much more clearer definition of what reflexology is. Is that a good thing or is that going to dilute and water down everybody's experiences? I don't know. That's, that's an open interpretation as well. But um, I'll finish up there anyway, and I will say thank you to everybody because I've had a wonderful time, wonderful discussion. Thank you, Firas, for, uh, for joining us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you and Sam, thank you for joining us from Florida. I know you've got to go off to do some work of your own, there's some special work. Thank you again. And uh, David, as always, I shall be speaking to you, no doubt, in the next day or so. Uh, but thank you for your time as well. And You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure being part of this. And you've been an amazing host. Oh, very good. I'm a frustrated radio host, obviously. <laughs> mm -hmm. And to my good friend Sergio. And I, it's thank you, Lee. To, to work with you and to speak with you. So thank you, everybody. Big wave to the camera. And uh, all right, lovely to see you all. And thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed today's discussion. I hope you found it informative and helpful. If you've enjoyed Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom, do click on the like and subscribe buttons down at the bottom. Um, we also are really, really pleased to say that Lee is going to be doing a tour of the UK uh, with his course exclusively at Jubilee College. So if you would like to sign up for that, there is also a sign up button down at the bottom so that you can pre-register even your interest so that we can keep you updated on dates and where he's going to be. So until next week, until our next Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom, stay well, stay safe.